Nations website, globalnews.ca slash Toronto. Scott? Thanks, Amber. Well, obesity, a growing problem around the world. According to a new study, the number of overweight or obese individuals has steadily increased since 1980. 23% of children and adolescents, which is stunning, in the developed world are now overweight and in this country nearly 65% of men, 49% of women are overweight. Registered dietitian Andrea Hallwagner joining us today with some tips on how to maintain a healthy weight. Uh, thanks for coming in. I know this gets talked about a lot. Uh, it's always, we're always talking about diet and being healthy and exercise. You're kind of going at it a little way, a little way different, talking about different ways, I guess, personalizing everybody's battle. Absolutely, and it is different for everybody. You know, um, Dr. Arya Sharma, one of our leading obesity researchers, actually internationally respected out of Edmonton, has suggested that rather than thinking about, I need to lose, I need to lose, if you're struggling with your weight, the first step is thinking about just trying to maintain your weight this year and not see that every year it's going up, up, up. So it is a process. It's a process. Um, let's talk about the do it your way that you've uh, tackled. Yeah, and I thought about what three things could people do to really tackle this whole concept around weight and do it your way. What I mean by that is some people are meatitarians, some people are vegetarians, some people are carb junkies, some people have sweet tooths. Whatever it is, what I know about weight loss is that if you custom build something that's going to fit your style of eating and just shrink down your portions of those foods, that is probably going to be far more effective than doing some so extreme lifestyle. So you're even saying, never mind what you're eating yet. If, yeah. if maybe you're at a certain point where you're like, just start with what you're eating and eat less of it. Absolutely. So what we know is people underestimate what they eat by about 20 to 40 percent. Okay. And so if you think about the carb junkie, and I brought a measuring cup here to show you. Say you love rice or you love pasta. Um, if you took a quarter cup less rice every day at dinner, or if, say if you're a meatitarian and instead of having 10 ounces, you had 8 ounces of right. meat. Right. Small things. And you did that every single day. Every time you ate, it was just a tiny little bit less. That's a massive caloric deficit in the course of a week, a month, and a year. Now you say maintain uh, by uh, shrink some of the stuff you're already eating. What about the stuff that we know isn't good for us but we eat anyway? And you're yes. Talking about the you might be wondering, cookies. why are there cookies and chocolate? Yes. Well, A, I'm the chocoholic nutritionist, so okay. I'm always going to tell you that if you aren't incorporating some of the things that you love the most, and that could be french fries for some people, it could be beer or wine for others. I brought in a couple of my favorite soulful foods. Okay. What I know that is most effective is that if you start and think very clearly about what do I really love, what is non-negotiable, and you put that in and you build your healthy eating plan around that, it's okay. always going to be more satisfying. Usually people kind of come into our office and they say, well, what has to go? You'll probably tell me I can't eat ice cream again. Or, and it's, what's really worth it? Because not everything you love the most. And I guess the danger is if you do cut this stuff out completely, that's where you're going to have anxiety maybe, and that's going to cause more stress, and maybe give up dieting per se, opposed to just maintaining and process. Psychologically, anytime we feel deprived, we overcompensate. This is a known thing. So if you deprived me of chocolate, I would do it for a while, and then I would go ballistic, and I would overeat it. So, <laughs> And you're talking about one of the other strategies I thought was interesting, is being around food more. Basically, again, part of the process, cooking. Absolutely, and this might sound pretty basic, but if, if you think about many of the clients that are struggling the most with their weight in our practice, food is an afterthought instead of at the forefront of what they're thinking about throughout the day. So I want you to think about food more if you're trying to lose weight, which might sound counterintuitive, but I know the more that there's planning and the more you're mindfully thinking about what's supper today, what groceries am I going to need, how long am I going to need to prep something, the more you're going to be just naturally cooking healthier options. Instead well, it makes of sense instead, instead of just all of a sudden you're hungry, well, yeah. you're going to grab what's easy, and usually what's easy Ain't Absolutely. So I got a couple of great options. Um, Dietitians of Canada has wonderful apps, great cookbooks. Mark Bittman is probably one of my favorite cookbook okay. slash app users of all time. This is an awesome starting cookbook for just the bare bones basics. It'll get you excited about wanting to cook. Very cool. Thanks so much for your time. Always appreciate your insight. You can get more information on Andrea's website at healthandnutrition.com. Much more still ahead here. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about the Much Music video awards they were on